What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Hawaii episode. It is a perfect, beautiful morning on this morning. Uh, one tiny problem, uh, my GoPro microphone did not work. I bought a brand new microphone from Best Buy, paid good money, you know, as opposed to bad money, for a uh, brand new microphone and uh, zero sound. So I'm walking around talking as if you guys are hearing uh, everything I'm saying and literally it's not picking it's not even picking up like a static noise there's literally no noise coming out of the microphone it was completely defective we'll stick with the voiceover for now anyway it's a beautiful day here in Hawaii and our plan was to spearfish on this day however we came down to this beach and the waves were really big in fact the waves were so big people were surfing and so that kind of blew our spearfishing plans out of the water uh, because if you guys are new to spearfishing uh, that stirs up the sand and the silt and makes the visibility terrible and so we cannot uh, you can't see anything and so you cannot spearfish gorgeous morning like, I was happy just to be out there but the water was all dirty so I uh, we came up with a plan to move somewhere else by the way these are the uh, uh, other guys I was with this is Mike from the YouTube channel awesome blue I'll put a link to in the description this is Ricky from the YouTube channel Maui nappers and this is Daryl who I don't think has a YouTube channel uh, at least yet maybe he might but anyway I was spearfishing with them and uh, they were nice enough to invite me out they are very avid spear fishermen I am not, as you guys know, if you guys follow along with my channel. So we move around to the different side of the island, and as you, you can see here, the waves are uh, looking very small. Everything was nice and calm, and so we decided to spear fish here. It's a very shallow on this side. Um, you can go out like several hundred yards and still only be in about 20 feet of water. So even this part here, I'm trying to show off my spear gun, and there's a water droplet right in the middle of the lens, and so. Like, I look like an alien or something. It was just, this was the worst intro of all time. I was furious when I saw, when I reviewed the footage. But anyway, the GoPro on the front of the spear was working. And so that was good. So we first drop in the water, and you see it's very dirty right at first, which wasn't a good sign, but we thought it has to be clear farther out there. So as we go out farther, we'll speed it up here. And you can see it's starting to look better. Starting to look better, going a little bit farther. Right off the bat here, I spy... A great big flounder that's a good size peacock flounder they only get about 20 inches that was about a 15 16 inch or so i think flounder just one of the coolest fish on the wheat reef on the wheat the wheat the reef quite frankly and i could have speared it but if you guys follow real closely with my channel i speared a peacock flounder that's what this particular one is i speared a peacock flounder uh, about a year ago and we tried eating it but it was so bony it was almost inedible so I decided to let this one swim on by and decided that I had a bigger fish to fry. Pun intended. Anyway, uh, going out there, there's Ricky. Uh, I'll put a link, like I said, to their channels if you want to see their versions of the same day. Uh, I'll put a link to their channels. You guys can watch them. But this is my perspective, and it was a lovely perspective. When I f when we finally got out to deep water, you can see how clear it is. And there were turtles everywhere. I think I came upon a family of turtles here. Because you can see all little tiny ones. There were, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know there's one above the camera. Nine, ten. There were like a dozen turtles right in this area. I think I came right upon like a turtle family. Oh, there's none. There's like number 13. Like, there are so many turtles out there. And uh, not only are they pretty to look at, but I also feel safer around turtles because I feel like if a shark came swimming along at this moment, it would choose the turtles over me. So, uh, yeah, I always make sure turtles are around. Uh, anyway, I spy some saltwater chubs here. And, yes, they are exactly like the freshwater chubs, except these are just the saltwater version. They only eat, like, plankton and microorganisms, and they aren't predators. Uh, and so some of them swim right toward me. They're also pretty dumb. Like, look how close this fish gets to me. And, bam, I miss them. A little rusty. It's been, it's been a few mon months since I've uh, <clears throat> done this. So anyway, moving on, I spy a leatherback swimming around. So I take my spoon and I throw my spoon out. That surely he will be interested. And he was. He comes swimming over, totally stops paying attention to me, paying attention to the spoon. But I learned a hard lesson here, folks. Uh, when you throw the spoon out, you have to 
throw it at least within shooting distance of yourself. You can't wing it out there 30, 40 feet. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of it. Uh, yeah, so, so newbie move again there. I learned you're supposed to throw the spoon within a reasonable distance where you can actually shoot the fish. So yes, I did distract the fish, but um, he he was too far away. Uh, if you guys are new to the spoon method, you simply throw it out there and uh, it acts as, see I keep it in my glove, I see a barracuda and I throw it out there and what the idea behind the spoon is as it flutters to the bottom it acts as a lure and a distraction. The fish swim over to look at it and it takes their attention off of you and they're looking at the spoon and then you can actually swim close enough to spear them. So you can't throw it too far away. Here is a barracuda. It was the first time I've ever seen a barracuda. Look, he's looking at it. But he was wise. Like he was real interested in it but he uh, saw me. He sees me point the spear at him and he takes off. And so it was cool seeing the Barracuda for the first time, and he was a little interested, but uh, Barracuda apparently are a little wiser than the average fish. So moving on, I thought, I, surely I can handle a parrotfish. Parrotfish are easy, right? Um, so I'm stalking this parrotfish here and waiting for a good shot, waiting for him to turn broadside. They have really wide bodies to shoot, and bam, it's a miss just by inches just by inches so anyway as move on to the next parrot fish spy another one this guy was totally distracted he was chomping on the coral not even paying attention to me and uh wait for him to turn sideways he turns totally broadside here watch this he's, he's not even paying attention to me which is rare miss him too so I was feeling very newbie-ish here if newbie-ish is a word uh anyway I see another parrot fish I'm like okay I got this one third time is a charm right Wait for him. Wait for him. I'm close enough. He's right there. He's not even paying attention to me. Bam. Miss him too. I am terrible. I have lost. I, I, I never had a touch to begin with, but I've lost my touch for spear fishing there. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Mike. This is uh, uh, this is Mike, and I, luckily he shared some of his clips with me. I, I strapped a GoPro on him. That's not Mike. That's a turtle. Uh, anyway, so he swims around with my GoPro. And he gets some cool shots, and Mike is actually a really avid spear fisherman. So, uh, as we come around here, he's stalking a uh, parrotfish. And this is how it's supposed to look, okay? So you see a parrotfish, you like, bam, headshot. That's what it's supposed to, that, that's what I had envisioned myself doing. Uh, it hadn't come together yet, but he gets a perfect headshot on this gorgeous parrotfish right there. And, um, yeah, perfect shot fish all the way around and uh, the parrotfish the reason why I call them parrotfish if you're new to uh, Hawaiian waters is they have a beak on them see that pretty nasty looking beak there and they actually go around they just chomp the coral they're very hard to catch on a fishing line because they'll chomp through your fishing line and uh, yeah just like a parrot so Mike uh, is uh, again in this little shallow area here sees another parrot fish this is a cool one here He's Bam! Gets him. This is the cool... I think these are one of the coolest parrotfish on the reef, actually. They're they're like camouflage. The other ones are beautiful, but look at the camo colors on that dude. They blend in so well. Again, big, nasty chompers on him, but a beautiful fish. Nice shot. Again, perfect shot, pretty much. Um, yeah, anyway. So thank you to Mike for getting the footage I could not get. Uh, back to me. He, this is really me in a nutshell right here. Look, this is an entire school of fish. Can't mess this up, right? Oh, yes, you can, folks. An entire school of fish. Look, I look around. I'm like, nobody saw that, right? Good. All right. So a bunch of time goes by here, and... I see another flounder on the bottom. Don't know if it was the same one or not, but I see another flounder. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I lay it before you that I am an innocent victim of a faulty gun. All these misses have not been entirely my fault, and I want to prove it to you right here. Okay, so I see a flounder. Observe the size of the flounder. I know it's kind of hard on a video, but he is at least 15 inches in diameter. Now, I am not a good spear fisherman, but I am pretty sure that I can shoot a 15 inch wide target. And if you will observe, my gun, I will pause it right here, right before I'm about to shoot. So would you not agree that gun and fish are perfectly aligned? 
Like, if you were going about to take that shot, would you not be confident that it was going to go right into this 15-inch wide flat fish that's laying almost perfectly still on the bottom? So I, <laughs> I defend myself. I take the shot, and look, I miss. So l let's see a replay. A slow-mo. Like, how did that miss? How did it go off to the right of the fish? I, I, I think I am an innocent man. Anyway, so fortunately for me, the flounder did not go very far. And I thought, I'm going to get this dude. I see him hiding in the corner. He's literally trying to scoot up under there. Bam, I got him. I was, I was finally happy with a shot <laughs> at the end of the day. And you're probably wondering, wait a second, I thought you said you were not going to eat peacock flounder after the last experience. They were too bony. And yes, they were too bony. However, um, I had a bunch of subscribers when I published that video. They said, oh, you have to fillet it. I did not fillet the flounder. We just cooked it up whole and tried eating it. And so I thought, well, you know what? I could try it again. We'll try peacock flounder again. And this time I will, you know, learn how to fillet it. We'll, we'll try something new. We'll level up in real life here. I will learn how to fillet a flounder and we will fillet it and see if that makes them uh, not so bony and to where we can eat them. So that was my rationale behind trying a peacock flounder for a second time. We're going to try to fillet this bad boy. Beautiful fish, by the way. Um, I love the colors. The blue rings on it are so cool. And um, yeah, so there it is. I at least got some at the end of the day. And to tell you the truth, even though I, I had a ton of misses, it was a really fun day out there. So it's always fun swimming around um, on the reef. Well, that was a good time. A little bit of a tough day out there. But uh, at least I got one fish, one flounder here. And then uh, uh, Mike actually gave me a uh, little parrot fish along with my flounder, one of his parrot fish to try. So this should be fun. The most challenging part of the video is coming up here, uh, filleting this flounder. I have never filleted a flounder before, so. Now before we begin here, I'm uh, taking a refresher YouTube video on how to fillet flounder, watching YouTube while making a YouTube video. All right, I think I got it. Let's try this thing. We're about to, about to level up in real life here, hopefully. All right, my friends. So, uh, one of the guys I watched recommended starting on the white side. So I grab the flounder underneath the gills. I'm gonna make a cut right here. You know what I'm gonna do, guys? I, I, I think I think I'm hashing up that side. So we're gonna try again. And maybe once this side comes out, we'll be able to better tell what we're doing. Okay. Well, it's not very pretty along the line there, but at least we're making some progress. This is all bones right here. And uh, when I feel the meat right here, I don't feel any bones in that, so. We're making a little progress. Ugh. Well, for a first time, not too bad. It's, it's not pretty, but uh, I definitely feel fewer bones. We do have to clean up right along the, uh, the edge there. I'll cut that part off. And then guys, we have the carcass here. We will uh, use this for crab traps. We might just put this down all by itself and then snorkel around and when the crabs come over to it, we'll just pick them up by hand. That would be a really cool video. All right, let's take these up to the room. Try out. We're gonna make some fish sandwich. So fish sandwiches make a flounder sandwich. How does that sound?
the top. And while it's cooking, I'm gonna add a splash of lemon juice to it. That combination of my Cajun spice and lemon juice is beautiful. Really? It's looking a little black. I don't know if that's just the way, that must be just the color of the skin. Turn off the burner. Look at that guys, we got blackened fish right there. Ah. Oh, the folded ones are the best. Oh, what a beautiful afternoon out here. Nothing like a Hawaiian sun, Lilikoi passion. Looking at my sandwich here, something hits me right off the bat. I see some bones of the flounder hanging off, like that little bone right there. Hmm. So this whole corner piece I can see has no bones. So we'll take a bite off the corner. We're safe there. But as we go through this, we'll have to see how, uh, as we eat through the sandwich, see how many bones are actually in the flounder. So say a quick prayer. Um, I always edit through my prayers. A lot of people think that, um, I edit through my prayers maybe because I'm ashamed or something like that, and I'm really not at all. Um, I can talk about Christianity with people for hours, actually, even even strangers or people I barely know. So, um, so it's not that at all. It's just that on my YouTube channel, it's personal. My prayers are personal. They're just between me and God and nobody else <laughs> and so that's why I just I just kind of edit through them I do always uh, pray for every meal uh, over every meal I eat even when I'm by myself but um, uh, for a YouTube video I just always just edit it out because it's it's personal it's personal and that's so all right flounder sandwich going in Mmm. Mmm. That is good. Alright, so I took the corner bite. But I can see. Check this out. Those are some bones right there. So even though I filleted the bad boy, I got quite a few bones out. There were some more there. I don't see anything else. That is crazy about the peacock flounder. They are just the boniest little fish. It's like right on the corner piece there. I even see some bones in that. What the heck? Man, I was confident that I had gotten all the bones out. Hmm, flounder might be inedible, guys. I thought with the proper fillet job, peacock flounder that is. All those other kind of flounder, I mean, there are many, many different types of flounder, but the peacock flounder, they might be safe from my pan. Like this bite here, no bones, but you see those three right there sticking out? There you go. So, this bite right here is bone free. You still have quite a few. Check it. We have a little flounder hors d'oeuvre there. Well guys, here's my honest opinion on this fish sandwich. I probably will never eat peacock flounder again. It's just too bony. It is very tasty fish, but the bones take the fun out of it. The parrot fish that I filleted up earlier, we're gonna wait for that and we'll have a whole nother video where we'll do a parrot fish spear and cook and uh, analyze how that tastes. For now, I'm gonna finish my sandwich here, pick the bones out of it and finish my sandwich. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to check out Ace Video's Spice down in the description below. It is delicious. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.